preparing to live stream the meeting. Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sasquatch Trail Runners Run Venture Facebook Live series. My name is Kim Levinsky. I'm the owner and race director for Sasquatch Trail Runners in New Jersey. Tonight, we are joined by Miriam Wiskin, who will be sharing all about her ultra running adventures and all things pizza. Before we give Miriam her squatchy introduction, I'm going to share a few updates about what is happening in the wonderful world of Sasquatch trail running. So first of all, thank you to everyone who came out to the Thunder Chicken Squatch trail race at Stokes State Forest this past Saturday. We celebrated National Military Appreciation Month by honoring our military and veteran runners before the race. And we supported our charity partner, Operation Chill Out, who distributes warm clothing to homeless veterans throughout New Jersey. Through the race proceeds, Operation Chill Out is going to give 55 individual homeless veterans emergency supplies using our donation money. Uh, we want to give another squatchy thank you to James Leitner of Mission Clean Water who ran the aid station on Saturday. We are always happy to support his mission to bring clean drinking water to underserved communities around the world. So we want to encourage everyone who's listening to this to join the Mission Clean Water 10,000 mile challenge during the month of May. So you can sign up for free on runsignup.com. And when you register, you want to join the Sasquad Trail Runners team. There's a little friendly competition going. So if 10,000 miles are either ran, walked, swam, biked by the entire community, Mission Clean Water is going to receive a $10,000 donation from their sponsors. So let's help James and Mission Clean Water achieve that really awesome goal for the month of May. Our next trail party is on June 27th at the Burlington County Fairgrounds in Columbus, New Jersey. That is the Midnight Squatchapalooza. So join us at midnight to run or hike for 12 hours, six hours, three hours, or a 5k. That course is a flat and fast grass course. It's basically a cross-country course and it's uh, in Columbus, New Jersey. After that, we are going to the South Mountain Reservation in Milburn, New Jersey for our annual Fat Sass Switchback Challenge race. This one mile course climbs 300 feet and then descends 300 feet all within the course of one mile. So you can sign up to complete that loop as many times as you can in either six hours or three hours. Or if that's too long for you, you can do three loops to complete a 5K. So that 5K has over 900 feet of vertical gain. And you can learn more about the rest of our events for 2020 by checking out our website, which is sasquadtrailrunning.com. Okay, so the reason that you're all here, Miriam, that's your cue to come on in. <clears throat> we are joined by Miriam Wiskin, AKA the ZA Report. You can see she is just surrounded by pizza very, very appropriately. And she is joined by her faithful companion, Frankie. So I'm going to read her her, um, her bio for you, just to set the stage, give you some background about who Miriam is. So Miriam, aka The Za Report, is an underground pizziola baking up a generous storm of pizza in New York City amidst the pandemic to help New Yorkers in need, happy, full, and happy and full of pizza. Originally from Ohio, I am wearing my Ohio shirt for the Woo! occasion. <laughs> oh, H. Yep. Oh, H. Oh, I O. O H. You know, I was, I, I was never a Buckeye fan. I'm sorry. I, mean, I went to Cincinnati, but I still do the O H I O. <laughs> Next, and from now on, when I see you on the trail, I'm going to be like, O H. You're like, I O. Oh, we'll get, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. <laughs> so Miriam was originally from Ohio. She moved to New York City to pursue a career in graphic design. In 2011, she met Scott. Weiner of Scott's Pizza Tours, where she would then lead pizza tours all around the city until the spring of 2020 when the pandemic struck. 
In early 2020, she decided to trade in a career as an art director to pursue pizza full time, starting out as a pizziola at Pauly G's. She then opened her own speakeasy pizzeria run from her home in Brooklyn, New York. So for any New Yorker without a job, a first responder, or anyone having a tough time, Miriam gives out free pies under the notion of paying pies forward to honor her mom who passed away in the summer of 2020. Pizza has become a passion that Miriam considers an art, each slice having a unique story and taste. Also an ultra runner, she's famously known for being the five-time female champion of the New York City Pizza Run. Yes, she can eat pizza and run. Miriam has been featured in the New York Times, Thrillist, NPR, Munchies, The Kelly Clarkson Show, and most recently, the Dunkin' Donuts blog, which I know she's very proud about that. This podcast is sponsored <laughs> by Dunkin' tonight. <laughs> yeah. So that is Miriam's um, short bio. I know there's a lot that, that we definitely missed out. We're going to cover tonight. I first met Miriam, I think it was this past summer, we met at the South Mountain Reservation. We were, we were on a run, both with our friends. We ran into her and we, all of us just hit it off. Bunch yeah, well, of I remember like we were, we were in a parking lot and you were on weather at one end of the parking lot. I was on the other end. And I was like, there are some female trail runners. I must know some of the people in that crew. <laughs> yes. And I think it was, uh, I think I recognized Robin. Yes. You guys had, I think some connections through I mean, she's a food photographer. So there were some connections. There's that you food, but then there's like every, it's like anyone who does ultras, like we all have at some point run the same races in some facet. So yes, totally, totally. Um, so Miriam, thank you for coming on tonight. We are so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. This has been my, like legitimately my first break today. I've been working nonstop on the website for the past three days. So um, but I am, I'm excited. I'm still actually drinking coffee at eight o'clock at night. Um, probably not the greatest prep, probably not the greatest thing for sleep considering I have an ultra. I have a 50 mile race in Pennsylvania on Saturday. Dirty German, right? Dirty German. Yep. You know, truth be told, I signed up for that race for the grilled cheese. And then they sent out <laughs> this, they sent out a message to the, to all the racers saying that like they're banned, they're prohibited from preparing any food. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so I, I sent the email back. I'm like, can you guys do grilled cheese and just put little pieces in a cup? So it's still like, you're not doing it right there in front of people, but like, we can still get our grilled cheese fixed. I'm like, the last time I did one of their races, I had a Ziploc bag in my running hydration pack just for the sole purpose of putting the grilled cheese into that and eating it at the end of the race. Cause it was that <laughs> good. What did, um, the race director, Stefan, say, did he respond back? Yeah, I respond. I'm sure it was like one of those, like, oh my God, dumb girl, dumb girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm also like the person always that like, when I joined like the food co-op, I like, they're asking people why they joined. And I was like, well, my roommate wouldn't share her cheese. So I joined for the cheese. And everyone's like, you're so weird. I'm like, it is what it is. I really like cheese. Um, so, but the food co-op is like this thing in Brooklyn where you have to have, you have to work and you're not allowed to give other people the food that you get from there so I'm a little more liberal with my rules but um but yeah so I have this thing for cheese like especially grilled cheese like I mean this race your brother makes a really good grilled cheese mind you like when I did the when I did the last race with you guys uh, about a month ago the 50k I mean I was like what was it called the sass squashy apple the squashy squash apple. apple squash apple squash apple <laughs> you have the metal oh wait the metal right here it's on my yeah there we go yes there it and is. I actually did pretty well. I think I, uh, that was the infamous race where I was racing two 20 year olds. And yeah. I was like, oh, and I realized 12 miles. And I was like, I am 20 years older than both of you. I'm going to slow down. My bones <laughs> need me to slow down. <laughs> they, they both like, have such nice things to say about you. They said, we were they, oh my God, really nice were, lady. <laughs> but like, I think it was one of the girls that was like a, first of all, it was her first ultra ever, first yes. trail run ever. Yes. And so we, I was like giving her advice. I'm like, if it's up, just, just walk. It's an opportunity to put something in your mouth. It's snack time. <laughs> um, but he's giving her all these tips and she's like, it's so weird that you guys just talk. And I'm like, well, yeah, what else are we going to do? We're out here for like, probably at least like five to six hours. And we might yes. as well like keep each other company. <laughs> um, and then it wasn't until like mile 12 that I realized that I was 20 years older than both of those girls. Um, but it, you know, it makes for a good story. Like my coach is like, I hope you learned your lesson. Like, and I'm like, what's that? She's like, 
I don't know, maybe don't like start the race right off out of the, out of the gate and like just pace a little bit. I was like, I was, they were going really fast and I really didn't want to be in the back. So, but I had a ton of fun. Like I was so proud. I think Jane was one of the girls name. I can't remember the other girl's name, but like, they, you know, it's like, it's one of those things. Like you come together on trails, you bond and you know, we're talking about nutrition and here I am like pulling out and fighting with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in my bag just because like the jelly got everywhere. And the girl, one of the girls was like, really, you're eating peanut butter and jelly? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, if I had pizza and I was like, wait a second, I do. And I like pulled out pizza <laughs> and she's like, you can eat pizza. And I was like, you can eat anything. I'm like Vermont, I was want. eating a burger and a hot dog, drinking root beer. And I'm like, it is what it is. That's why ultra running is so much fun. It is. You got, you, you run, you eat and you repeat pretty much. That's, that's yeah. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So Miriam, let's get the rundown of your running story. Um, you can give us kind of the cliff notes version because I want to have plenty of time to talk about all things pizza and, and how okay. running overlaps. But walk us through how did you first get into running and then trail running and your journey up until today? So I've always, I've run since I was 11 years old, but like my first experience with quote unquote ultra running was when I was, um, sorry if you can hear the dog eating, it's really loud. Okay. <laughs> Not as loud as the Marachi band outside of my window. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, but so uh, I, well, my first like, my first encounter with ultra running was when I was a freshman in high school and I wound up like, I would swing up to varsity JV and the freshman team and I, the senior girls really didn't take a liking to me. So one of them was like, practice starts at this time. And me being the one that normally likes to be early, but now in New York, I'm always late because that's what New Yorkers are. But I showed up 45 minutes, what I thought, you know, 45 minutes late thinking I was 15 minutes early. And the coach is like, you know, the rules, one loop around all three soccer fields. And we had to do one loop for every minute that you're late. And I'm like 45 loops. And I'm like, we're having a two a day. I guess I'm not, I guess I'm going to not go home today. And like when everyone came back for the second practice, you could see the trail that I left behind in the grass from running that long. And I'm like, I don't know how long I ran. Like, I don't even know how to calculate that. But like, I say it was that that moment in high school. And I think that's like 1996 that I really, or 1995 that I encountered what would later become my first experience with ultra running. Um, and then it wasn't years till later. Like I did Ironman triathlon stuff for like 10 years. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, all I want to do is get to Kona. And then you realize like, oh, if I go to Kona, it's going to cost me like thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. And um, there's a good friend of mine, uh, Chip Winston. He actually lives out in uh, out in um, uh, Maplewood. Yeah, so, I know Chip. Uh, Chip yeah, is, so Chip, is uh, he's guy, like, right? He's like literally like one of God's gifts to like ultra running. Like he's just he and his and his son, like all his kids. Yeah. Like, you all are like natural born like trail ponies horses yep. like you just <laughs> boom, they're like cougars so but um I remember I trained for my first ultra which was um the same time that Hurricane Sandy hit it was a 50k with the North Face Challenge out in Marin San Francisco mm. and at the time like we were stuck training only in Prospect Park because like you know it's like everything had been washed out a lot of trees are knocked down and we couldn't really leave because there was no gas so I remember him putting me on this little tiny trail in Prospect Park that was maybe about 50 feet and we just would go, and he's like, if you go all the way down, it's like a hundred feet. So we just like up and down, up and down, up yeah. and down. Everyone's like, what are these crazy people? I'm like, I'm getting a thousand feet of elevation. And what do you mean? It's Prospect Park. <laughs> um, but I wound up traveling out there and that 50 K was the year that they had some of the worst rainfall ever. Um, and it was torrential downpours. The trails were completely destroyed. It was the muddiest experience I ever had. It was the most fun I had ever had. Um, and I crossed the finish line smiling. And I remember the moment I like crossed over the, that I crossed over. Do not squeak that. You're done. Not that. Not now. Not now. Not now. Nope. Frankie. Okay. <laughs> you don't want there to be that. Um, but I remember the moment I like crossed over the marathon mark. I stopped there. And I was like, oh my God, I'm running past the marathon right now. Nothing's happening. This is amazing. <laughs> um, and I finished it. Had it so much fun. And then the following year, I was in a really bad bike accident in Prospect Park. Um, I had a stage four AC joint separation of the shoulder, had it rebuilt. I was confined to six months of walking, drove me nuts. I had like one of those little footstep counters and I was like, how many thousands of feet can I hit a day or steps? 
Um, right. But I, I sort of like vowed to myself, I was like, I don't want to go back to triathlons. And if I do one thing, I want to run in, a, in the most beautiful places for the longest amount of time. Mm. Um, so I signed up for every single North Face, North Face Endurance Challenge race that following year. And from what I was told, I was the first person to ever do it. Um, they did give me one race entry for free. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> so, yeah, so I had, I think the first one was in DC. No, not that one, not the bunny rabbit. You're done Go over there. <laughs> I'm such a bad mom. Nope. Nope. Not the squirrel. <laughs> just sit, just sit. Um, so it was, uh, I started off in DC and I almost didn't finish DC because I got sick and this is going to sound terrible, but like, you know, the triathlete mentality is you just have to keep going and win. And if you puke, you're done. So that's what I was thinking. And it was really hot out. And if you've ever run the course in DC, like it's always muddy, it's always hot. And it's just a, it's just a sludge fest. So here I am at the aid station, like, and right before I'd gone to the aid station, somebody had handed me a pill and it's just like, I'm thinking, wow, this looks like a drug deal on a trail. I'm like, oh, it's a salt pill. I was like, okay, I'll take it. I got to the aid station. I threw up. And I'm looking in there and thinking, oh, I need that salt tablet. Oh, I'm going to survive. And as I'm reaching, the girl next to me is like, oh my God, it's Dean Carnassus. And I'm like, oh my God, Dean Carnassus not touching that pill. <laughs> and I said hello to him. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to finish this race now. Today, since Dean Carnassus is here and he like right. told me, good luck, you're going to do better. <laughs> so I wound up finishing the race that day, barely. Um, and then from there, I had to go on to do one in Utah. I did one in, um, up in Canada, uh, somewhere I was like near Toronto. There was California, Wisconsin. Well, Utah is interesting because you had Utah 50K one weekend. And then I had the, then I had a Wisconsin, or I think it was Wisconsin 50 mile the following weekend, which is part of the reason people had never done them is because they were like back to back and you just, no, okay, go get the squirrel. So it was just really hard to do them back to back. Um, and I was shocked that I'm like, oh, the 50K is basically a train race for a 50 miler. Um, and then I finally made it to California and I barely finished that race. But again, I was like, I have to see Dean at the end. Um, so I wound up finishing that one. And, and, you know, I got all the glory of just framing all six of those bibs and being like, I just fell head over heels with ultra trail running. And the way I've always described it to people, I'm like, Oh, you know, you just go out into the woods and you look for tables with snacks and you just do that all day long. And then eventually you cross the finish line, but you want to cross with the goal of not being the last to cross the finish line because the food's generally not around, um, <laughs> which I learned, I've learned a couple of times when I've had some tough days. I'm like, I'm the last person to cross. It's a good thing I have a Lunchable in my backpack. Oh. Totally kidding about the Lunchable. So, <laughs> but I mean, you're a race director, you get it. So I do, but you know, that's, that's happened to me. Cause I'm defending on the race, the back of the packer. And I've always said like the first time that happened, I said, I will never do this as a race director. There will always be food out for the back of the oh, pack great. because it is it, it it's demoralizing like you finish you finish your race and then there's nothing there like what the heck yeah you know? well I feel like the other thing is is like when I when I go on trails with new people I'm like oh like you know there's winning the race and then there's being DFL like right. DFL is like like you are like king and queen of the mountain if you're DFL totally. and, and it's friends like what does that mean it's like dead fucking last like you have been out there longer than everybody else so you deserve like the biggest trophy of all so like I always you know if I can stick around till the end, I like to like cheer for those people. And, um, I've done a couple stage races and, you know, for trans Rockies in particular, um, which is a really, really great race. There's my lucky pizza yes. baking hat right there. <laughs> um, it's basically, they have this thing called Chillville and you end where everyone is like camping and people are sitting and drinking beer and chilling, but everyone comes in to cheer in the last runners. And it's just, it's mm -hmm. such a strong sense of community. Um, and they also give you shots of whiskey at the last aid station before you get to the finish line. So there's that too. <laughs> the party. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess that's where like my trail adventure sort of began. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I haven't stopped. Like, it's just, you know, I, I signed up for a hundred miler a couple of years ago. I missed the cutoff by five minutes at Vermont. And then I went to go do it again last year. It got canceled. And I went to go do it again this year and it got canceled. So now I'm going to Ohio to do a uh, burning river. Yes. And my dad is ecstatic because he's like, Oh, you're going to come bring pizza. And I can also watch you suffer in, her, in an ultra race. <laughs> and I was like, well, at least you have the ultra part. Right. But, um, but, and then somehow I now have cousins sending me messages asking if I'm taking any orders yet. And I'm like, I haven't even booked the ticket or figured out what my logistics are. And you all want to order pizza. Wow. That's, yeah. that's awesome. And, and burning river is up, uh, Cuyahoga. 
right? Up National Park, yep. you're like Cleveland. Yeah. yeah, so my dad lives 20 minutes from there. So, I mean, it's going to be the best, hopefully, Airbnb ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that baby. Give me the bunny rabbit. That's awesome. All right, so we've got your running story pretty much. You're still, now you're training. Burning River is the main focus. Let's talk about your pizza journey, which I'm so excited to talk about. <laughs> walk, walk us through that. I know I gave kind of the, the overview in your introduction, but walk us through the pizza journey. How, did, how and why did it become a dream that you're pursuing and you've made a full-time career? Um, it's funny. Like I, I stumbled into being a pizza tour guide um, about nine years ago, and I did it for about eight years. Once a week, I gave a guided pizza tour in New York City where I taught people a complete education and history around pizza and the evolution of it. Um, and, but the way that I found out about the tours was through running. I did this race, as you mentioned, the five-time New York City pizza champion, where if you, you run a loop around Tompkins Square Park, which is this tiny little park. They no longer do it there, but you run the loop around this tiny park and you're dodging people that are in a food pantry line. You're dodging people that are passed out drunk on the sidewalk and homeless mm. people and just you know, old ladies with carts just pushing their groceries down. I'm like, but it's a fun obstacle course. But so you run a loop, you eat a slice, you run a loop, you eat a slice, you run a loop, you eat a slice, run a loop. And in my case, I eat a couple extra slices even after the finish because it was pretty good. Honey, no, you can't. Mommy's busy. Go get the squirrel. Anyhow, um, she is also an outdoor enthusiast. Um, so, but when the first year that I won it, they gave the male winner tickets to a pizza tour and the female got a pizza stone and I'm kind of like there's a pizza tour I'm like why did I not get the tour tickets why didn't he get the stone so I complained enough that the following year when I came back I won it again and I rightfully got my tickets but at the same time I became a freelance art director I got my own I went off and got my LLC and I you know and, and Scott was looking for somebody to work with him to do the tours mm -hmm. and he's like after interviewing you know, 20 people over two days and over a plate of meatballs and some coal fired pizza at John's on Bleecker. He's like, I think you're going to be perfect. You don't know much about pizza, but you know what good pizza is. And that's important. Mm -hmm. And I was personable. So I shadowed him for like two months. And then I guess you could say the rest was history. Like I just, I fell in love with it. And the more and more I became involved and the more I wanted to really understand pizza more and the science behind it, that helped nudge me into baking pizza, which I actually never thought I could. Like if I showed you the first photos of the pizza I baked, you'd be like, this is not the same person. Um, so it was uh, in, in 2020, I like on New Year's Day, I did an image board and I was like in this image board, I'm like, I knew I wanted to take my creative career and shift it into pizza. And I thought it was going to be just designing logos and boxes for pizzerias and doing like some pop-ups. And, but what it transitioned into was, you know, I started baking, I went through a breakup and I started baking pizza on Sundays and having people come over to my house just to keep myself busy. And then, um, you know, I was like, maybe I should get more into this. And I went around to a handful of pizzerias, like places I love and asked them like, can I get a job here? I want to learn how to make pizza my favorite pizzeria and just learn more about it. And so Polly G was like the first one to be like, when can you start? And our others are like, kind of blew me off. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Polly G's got really good wood fire pizza. And my mom also loved Polly G on Facebook. Like mm -hmm. he was like her hero. And I, I think it was just because, you know, he actually interacts with people and, versus Barbara Streisand never commented back to my mom. And mom would continue <laughs> to comment to her. Like, mom, Barbara's not running her Facebook. But Polly <laughs> was. So Polly and my mom bonded a lot. They knew each other online. Um, but also for my mom's 70th birthday, we surprised her with a trip to New York and the first place that she wanted to go was to Polly G's. Wow. And, you know, my mom doesn't eat pork and a lot of the pizza there like has like pork specific stuff, unless you're getting a margarita. So like, either way, my mom, like, you know, she got herself a real fancy dirty martini. She had her first child limoncello ever and she ate pizza and she was like the happiest I'd ever seen her. Mm -hmm. um, so that pizzeria specifically always had like a, like a special slice of my heart. Um, my, after my first night there, I figured out how to fire pizza in his oven. And he's like, well, do you want to like a paid apprenticeship? And I was like, yeah. Um, and so I was there for a couple months at the same time I was running Scott's corporate events. So I was whining and dining people on a bus at night, pairing wine with pizza. Um, and you know, having a blast doing that, it was sustainable income. Um, and then also doing like one of his tours a week. And when the pandemic hit, um, all of those jobs disappeared. 
like mm. the city was completely shut down all in the whatever design work I had like all of that stuff also fizzed out and I was like with a lot of other people I think there were 300,000 New Yorkers that were trying to file for unemployment and none of us got it for a while like I my check finally I was finally approved on my birthday which was insane but um but so I like with a lot of New Yorkers I was really sad and I was like okay we're all gonna get corona and we have to be ready so I, you know, I went out and made my chicken noodle soup and I bought my flu meds and I did everything to get ready for it to hit me um but you know because we weren't leaving the house I was also just becoming you know so isolated and lonely mm -hmm. and my mom was like well why don't you do what'll make you happy so baking pizza was a thing that she had encouraged me to do and I realized that most of the people in my building had lost their jobs there was an EMT on the third floor elderly woman on the first floor um, and there was a family in the back. So I put up a menu downstairs and a pizza box that said, Hey, I've been having a hard time, but I'd really love to bake pizza because it's going to keep me happy and it's going to feed everyone. So if you'd like a free pizza, here's the menu, text me or knock on my door. So I started off doing like four pies a night with leftover supplies that I had in my cabinet. And then I'd only go to the grocery every Friday. And, you know, everyone in, everyone in at least I think in New York was deciding to do a sourdough starter. So all the flour just like yeah. blew off the shelves. And then it's like, and now you can get plenty of flour. But back then it was like, I was hoarding the King Arthur flour. I was like, oh, there's bread flour. And I literally was like buying all of it and taking it around the front. Like, yo, I got the King Arthur bread flour. What do you need? How many kilos do you want? Um, <laughs> um, and then eventually like I was able to get flour. You know, I went to the city and one pizzeria owner I was like, oh, I got this bag of flour I'm not going to use. And he, it was like in clear plastic bags that he gave it to me. Um, and so I drove my car in, picked up the flour, and then I'm walking back to the apartment building and my landlord sees me. And I'm just like struggling to carry like what is 40 pounds of a clear plastic bag with a white substance. And it yeah. looks like, I'm like, <laughs> just call me El Chapo with a pizza El Chapo. Um, but so, you know, I quickly got containers for it all. And it was great because out of that, I was able to figure out how to make my Sicilian pizza because it was actually a very good flour from Caputo, the high protein bread flour. Um, but, you know, and I, I would go around to different pizzerias and start gathering boxes, but I went from like four pizzas a day to eventually like 12, 16, and then 22 to wow. 24. Yeah. And then like people You're outside the building- day? No, well, at one point I was doing like every other day. Then it was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Cause like I didn't have any races I could train for. Like the only race I was able to do last year, um, quote unquote, was the Yeti 24 hour challenge yeah. where you do, I think it was every four hours you had to run five miles. And it was the most fun I've ever had because in New York City at that point, nobody was out on the street. Even the criminals were not out on the street. So I'm like, the only people that are on the streets at like two in the morning were police officers with their lights on. I was like, oh, this is totally safe. And at that point, I didn't have the citizen app, which just makes you really neurotic in New York City because you learn about gas odors and people running down the street with machetes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, oh, I hear an ambulance. What's going on? Oh, you know, someone just drove into the building. Like, okay, it was a close call. Good day I'm not outside. Um, but so that was my, that was like the only thing I was able to do with, with ultra running and, you know, some sense of normalcy. But and I also did a pizza bake in the middle of that challenge, which I think I should have gotten a really special award for. <laughs> um, but my sister and her friend did it with me and they were in Boston. Um, but people started want, people started asking if they could pay a pie forward to pay for someone's pizza. So I had to pay for it, like buy supplies for me. Um, and then once people outside of the building started ordering, you know, I started posting more on Instagram. And before I knew it, there was a week wait. And as of uh, last Friday, people were waiting two months for the pizza. Wow. Um, so, but uh, tomorrow morning, I will officially be launching online ordering. Um, so the lucky people that happen to get on my website when they wake up will snag those slots. Um, but I uh, am finally actually 5,000 pizzas later, I am taking my shop over to a restaurant here in Brooklyn that is graciously letting me take over for two to three days a week. Um, and you know, I partnered with uni. So now I have a couple of their ovens and I'm playing with fire again outside, just to be clear, not in my apartment, but I do have two brevels that I use in the apartment. There's one there and there's one there. So I have six pizza ovens and then a regular oven that came with my apartment, which works amazing. It's not even bolted into the ground. My, the owner of my building's like, just be careful. Don't 
you know, lean it too far. I'm like, why is it not bolted into the ground? He's like, I don't know. They never bolted it. And I'm like, okay, good to know. <laughs> I love that oven. I wish I could take it with me. It's going to be in my pizza museum someday. This <laughs> ugly oven that is like 20 years old. It somehow works well. It's awesome. On wood. So, so, so let's backtrack a second. Cause when you said, okay. when you made that vision board, right? Was, was all that's happening now on that vision board? Like what, what, what was the initial dream and is that what you're doing right now or is it still evolving? Oh, I mean, that was a big slice of the dream. Um, I didn't realize that I would become a professional pizzaiola. I didn't realize I'd become somebody who's influential in pizza baking. Um, but you know, one thing I didn't mention that happened along in that whole journey was that my parents both did catch COVID and um, it was a struggle. My mom was in the hospital for five weeks and we had to let her go. So she passed from COVID um, and she'd been like a huge uh, motivator for me. So like, um, but one of the things that I did is I connected with my dad and I would bake for him before my live at fives. And, you know, it's just to give, to distract him a little bit. Um, but it, it was a very tough time, like pizza baking and it became like running for me. I always say that running was like my drug of choice because it's just helped to keep me stable and, and mentally sound and fit. And pizza baking became that too. And I, I discovered these two things that like really keep my heart beating. But, um, I say that every pie I bake is an honor of my mom. And I, you know, I wish that she had been able to try it because she would have picked all the cheese off and left the crust. <laughs> she would have gotten yelled at by everyone at the table. <laughs> um, but that was another like big slice of the story that, uh, th that sort of inspired a lot of this. And, you know, it's one of those things that my mom like would drive around and give out like 200 bottles of honey for Rosh Hashanah to make sure that everyone she knew was having a sweet new year. So for me, I feel like I'm giving out pizza for any New Yorker that lost their job or a first responder or a teacher, or if you're just feeling depressed and sad. Um, I basically became my mother, but instead of honey, I'm giving out pizzas. And I just saw like what it did for my community. And it, it just, it resonated so much. And I was like, really a spitting image of my mother, um, except I think I'm an inch taller than she was, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in a way, my mom is here in spirit in New York. And I've inspired so many other people to quote unquote, do good and be good to others. And I just remember my mom always used to say, like, you never know what someone else is going through. Like, remember to be kind to them. Like, you just, you never know, like, how one small kind gesture can change that person's trajectory so much. So I found pizza being, like, one of those things, like, like people were like, oh, you should charge, like, $25 for this pizza. And I'm like, no, it's $10. Like, everyone can use a break. It's a pandemic. We all have, like, lost something or someone and need something to pick us up. So, yeah. And you do something special with each of the pizza boxes. Yes, I put a for mom. Um, it's funny, like, you know, this, this thing that you made for me, um, after I finished your race, you handed this to me, but what I love is that inside of every box is the for mom and you like did like a perfect job on doing my handwriting, but that right there is what I put into every single box. Um, and that's me running with pizza. Yes, it is. <laughs> like truly, like this is, this is me. So thank you, this is like, been in every broadcast imaginable that I've been in. So thank you for being okay, on my you're wall. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I can personally attest that Miriam does actually run with pizza. She brought pizza in, I don't know if it was tinfoil or Ziploc bag to the Squatch Apple. Yeah. Out. Um, I got some, I got a slice of your Nutella, which was amazing. Oh, the s'mores Nutella. Oh yeah. my goodness. Like I pray so often that like the one spare dough ball will be left over so I can make myself a Nutella s'mores for breakfast for my run the next morning. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you're still on this journey, right? You've just got, uh, you told me before we started six pizza ovens. We've talked a little bit about some other options you have. What does, what does the future of the ZA report look like? What is your, what is your vision casting out? Ah, so um, I I am partnering with Uni. And I'm finalizing my uh, the details of my partnership with Uni. I'm going to be a little larger of a of a have a little bit larger role in promoting that company and working with them. But so the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm opening a speakeasy in another restaurant here in New York in a shared space so that I can, you know, not have to pay a huge amount of rent 
um, to operate and continue to do the pre-order pies that are first come first serve basis. Um, and that's in an effort just to help establish, like understand how a commercial space, baking in a commercial space will be. And then I have somebody that I am partnering with to open up a brick and mortar that is a takeout window only. Um, and she is a cookie baker and I call her like the magical unicorn of cookie bakers. Um, and her cookies really represent, I think they have the love, the personality, the charisma and the flair and the passion that I have in my pizza. So it'll be a bakery by day, so you buy cookies and it's a speakeasy pizzeria by night. Um, so I wanna get a neon um, frog signs. My mom's name, Hyla, actually meant frog. It's the largest genius of frogs. So we grew up with frogs everywhere and I always have a frog on me in some facet, whether it's in my running pack or it's on my apron. But um, so when, wherever I pop up, I want to just like when I'm baking, just to turn on the frog sign so people know that's where to get the magic pizza. Um, but I'm going to probably split my time between doing three days a week of doing small batch pizzas um, for pickup only um, at night out of that space. And then I'll do a focus on private events and catering. So I am currently in talks to build out a zero mission pizza van slash truck that will be the Unimobile. Um, and I'll be able to like drive to your race and bake 150 pizzas for all the finishers. And the truck basically is like a transformer. It opens up and I pull the ovens out and I build out a, a mobile pizza baking station. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's like, I'm hoping that by the end of the summer we have a space and I'm launching a Kickstarter in order to raise the funds. And, um, you know, I already have a pizza baker on board who's going to work events with me. I've already started booking events out, but you know, it's just going as I learning as I go. I mean, I moved to New York city on a six on a coin toss and $600 in my pocket. I'd never been here before. Also, my parents had no idea that the job I got did not pay minor detail of that. My mother would have never let me leave. But I figured it out, you know, it's, it's, you know, like 17 years later, I think I, it all worked out right, right. But no, I did not know I was going to be on this direct path of pizza. I just thought that, you know, that I would maybe do a couple pop-ups and I'd become more of a consultant, like, the, and it was called the pizzeria strategist where I'll give them branding strategy and marketing strategy. And now what I've discovered, like the bizarre report is that I've been able to take all of that experience and put it into where I am at now. And you know, everything's managed to go viral. But I think the reason why I'm so successful at this time has to do with that. I just really love what I'm doing. And I believe in supporting my community and inspiring others and encouraging others and the willingness to share and, and to teach people how to do things better. Like even today, one another home pizza baker is like, how do you store your dough at home? And I'm like, oh, go to WB Mason and buy these trays. They're half the price that we put on Amazon. But you can get at least three of these trays into your refrigerator and that's going to yield you at least 36 pots. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh my God, how did you even have a, like, I had to make a lot of mistakes to get to this place, but I want you to avoid all those mistakes. But it's just, you know, it's the willingness to, to help other people to bake off some pizza. So I'm like, I don't care if that person lives a mile away. I'm just so excited that they're baking pizza too. I love that. I love that so much. I, and I'll share this with everybody. I have loved when we get to chat um, either on the trail or the phone or whatever, because we have, I think, a lot of shared values in the way that we're running our businesses and, and giving back to the community is definitely, um, it's a pillar for both of us. So I so appreciate the example that you've set. And I know for sure you've inspired so many and it's been so cool. I mean, you've been picked up by, I named a few of them, but um, I shared the link to the Kelly Clarkson. Uh, oh yeah, I made Kelly Clarkson you know. cry. That was so great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but you know, it's funny during that segment, um, I invited Ralph Macho to come out for pizza and he just hasn't done it. Maybe he's listening to this podcast now and he'll realize that, you know, that he should come out. But um, the New York Times wrote about me really soon. Like, uh, I think it was in, they came out to cover me in June or July. Um, and then right after the times thing published, um, and that was a pretty, a pretty big deal to be published in the times so early on. And for me, I was kind of like starstruck. I'm like, Oh my God, I got in the times. And like, that's really something that people strive to get in. Like they, they spend their whole lives trying to get in the times. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel grateful that my mom got to, like, I didn't know that somebody had sent her the article, the physical article. And it, it, it warmed my heart so much. And I like, cried because I'm like, my mom actually got to read the article like before she passed away. So mm -hmm. she at least got to see that. But, um, but then Vice reached out to me and they wanted to do a documentary. And between the time that they had 
you know, started to schedule everything, my mom passed away. So they were able to really capture the whole story. And that sort of went viral and not sort of, but I mean, like it's over a million views already. Um, but I always tell people like, if you don't know what my story is, take 15 minutes and, and watch this. Um, and it, we had to wait like eight weeks to go back to see my dad. And even for the funeral, like we couldn't hug my dad because he had also had COVID. Mm-hmm. But when we finally got to back, I got to bake him pizza and like, it was the most magical moment to see him so excited. Um, And so on the new menu that's going to be releasing tomorrow, there's actually a pie on there called the Ray style. And that's for my dad. Um, It took about 20 minutes for him to tell me what his favorite toppings were based upon the style of the pizza. Cause he's like, well, this one, you know, I like extra sauce, but I don't like their, their sausage. But this one, I really like the sausage, but I don't want too much cheese. And I'm like, dad and I didn't want to tell him I was designing a pizza so dad if you're on and you figured out how to get on Facebook here's a pizza on the menu that is just for you it's extra sauce good sausage pepperoni and I think I'm going to convert him to putting some fresh garlic on there because I could convince him that's a vegetable (laughs) it's a little stretch but it works right yeah you know you know my dad is great I mean he's he's my, he's really like through all this, I've become so much closer with my dad and in a way that I think never knew him. And I realized that my sense of humor is 3000% from him. Mm-hmm. I, I'm the cheesiest person on the planet and I know where I get it from. Well, so. you can make nonstop. Like you've been like sliding in little pizza references into your vocabulary, slicing, yeah, you know. cheesy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, staying crestastic. <laughs> yeah. how are you how are you doing you know oh these are I like I the whole merch too. line <laughs> yeah don't do that <laughs> that's so but, but a lot of times like I it's just out of habit now like I'll be like uh I'll be like oh slice to meet you and like 50% of the time people catch it 50% they don't <laughs> anybody I'm with is like oh god <laughs> she's doing it again so, but, but pizza has always been like a special thing in the family. Like it's whenever we used to come home, it was the first thing we do is we all would, you know, my dad would pick us up and my mom would meet us at Marion's Pizza in Dayton, Ohio. And that's what we did. And then, um, yeah, no Marion's. so it's something, yeah. Oh my God. I like, my dad was trying to get it shipped to me for my birthday. And because of the pandemic, they're not shipping frozen pizzas. And he's like, I'm going to go buy you a couple Marion's pizzas and, you know, it'll be like a week old, but I'll save them for you. And I was like, one, I don't trust you to save the pizza for me. I know you're going to eat it. I know you, you can't just do that. And two, a dad, I love you, but I'd rather drive three hours South to get the pizza fresh than to have it a week old. Yeah. So now I have an important question. How do you feel about the Ohio square slices? Cause that's the thing in the middle. Oh, I love it. What do you mean? I was a kid that like my siblings. Oh my God. They were the worst. They used to eat all the edge pieces. And those are the best because they're the crunchiest and I'd be stuck with like the soggy middle square. Yeah. <laughs> so people would joke around and be like, oh, you're from Ohio. Do you know what they're like, do you know what a wedge is? I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know what a wedge is. Like we had little Caesars and we had, you know, we had Domino's, like we had Papa John's, we had that, but we, you know, also like um, Sumerians is tavern style. And the reason it's tavern style is you're supposed to drink a pint of beer and just nibble on the pizza. But like, Casano's and Marion's like there's a huge debate my uh one of my childhood well my debate. sister's childhood <laughs> friend Randy who's like a sister it's like a sister to me she lives here in New York but she'd be like you know screw you Weiskins and your Marion's it's all about Casano's and I'm like uh I'm like there's no comparison and they're the thing is they're brothers they, mm-hmm. they the business was split up so you have Casano's and you have Marion's and that's the pizza war in Ohio because you always have these like American Italian families that get into a fight the pizzeria is split up and then they spend their whole lives competing and I'm like they're totally different don't get me wrong I've met Chris Casano many times at the International Pizza Expo yes there is a week-long convention in Las Vegas <laughs> where you get in for well if, I mean if you're in the, in the industry you get in for free and basically you just eat your way to heaven in pizza like so what I would do is I would, I would, every day I would go to the Pepsi stand to get root beer. And then Casano's was generally right by there because they do uh, pre-made dough that they sell to, to uh, pizzerias. So I go, but he would bring their pizza and they'd bake it for people. So I'd be like, yo, I got my root beer. I'm just going to sit here and eat lunch every day. And I'm like, this is the closest I could get to home. I mean, it's not quite Marion's, but still really good. So Randy, if you're listening, 
like it's just because ohio pizza is so different than your style of pizza oh yeah oh i originally wanted to do tavern style um and the dough recipe that i came up with it just worked better doing these more artisanal and i hate to use the word artisanal because everybody uses that i even put it on my website which i'm sure people are like you use the word artisanal i'm like yeah i use the word artisanal because it sounds good to everyone except you but um but like i would love to do a tavern style pizza as of right now there's only one pizza in new york city that i feel that does anything close to like a quality tavern style pizza and that's emmett's and he also does chicago deep dish but another random cool fact about a pizzeria you can go in there and get a 20 dollars pizza and pair it with a two thousand dollar bottle of wine they have this crazy wine list and i'm like i guess the greatest thing ever i would totally take a date in there and buy a two thousand dollar bottle of wine with a twenty dollar pizza, as long as it's a really good pizza. And Emmett, you've got really good pizza, so kudos to you. Like, great <laughs> talk about great aspirations someday. Yeah, I'm just gonna sell like an eight dollar cookie with my twelve dollar pie because eight dollars for a cookie that is a lot. It is of a lot. Money. It is. Um, but yeah, I think like I would like in some so at some point to do it, but I have to focus on what I'm really good at right now. My specialty. Um, Apparently people really like my cloud-like uh, long fermented round pies. Mm. Uh, like I have a secret five, six-ish cheese blend that I put on my New York style pies. Um, and then my Sicilian, um, people really love because it's a butter crust Sicilian. So it's not just anything. Um, and it, every piece has crust on it. So like it's a double-edged crust and it's got fried cheddar cheese on it. Like it just circles around the entire pan. You can't go wrong with that. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. I mean, it's like my sister is always like, I don't know if I want the Michael Jordan pie or the Sicilian. Last time I really liked this one. This time I like this one. I was like, wow, screw you. I'll just make both. <laughs> so I think she's and then she'll be. I think I saw a comment from. Oh, her. my sister. I'm shocked if my sister. I can't well, there, see there anyone a, who's watching. There was a white white skin. There was a wise kid. I can scroll back up and look. Ray, up. Adam, or Rachel. There's only three Rachel. out there. Oh, my sister was actually on. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, guys, if you are watching, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. So drop your questions in the chat for Miriam. I will read them uh, to her. In the meantime, I have another question for you. Um, yes. So obviously, pizza is your passion, but running is also your passion. So like, can you identify like what what roles do each of those play? Do they overlap with each other for you personally? You know, like what does pizza mean to you? Baking pizza and then running, like what does that play in your life? Because I, I I sense there's there's some good overlap happening. Yeah, I mean they both help keep me balanced. Um, I I struggle when I don't run um, each day, and I also get sad when I don't bake pizza every day. Um, but for me, running's always been my escape, especially if I'm stressed, but it's like the only time where I am detached from everything, unless my sister is doing a 45 minute catch up call with me in the morning. But it's my normally my time where I'm detached from everything and I can just relax and, and either start or end the day on a really great foot. Um, and so for pizza, I, I experienced that same kind of um, feeling, except with that it's I'm baking pizza and I'm experiencing people come up to me and they pick up the pizza and just to see how happy it makes them. It gives me that same feeling. And like I say, every pie that I'm baking is kind of like a, a piece of art. So every time I go out and I hit the trails and like you, you actually, you hit the nail on the head and say like, this is the best time of spring because the trails are neon green. Yeah. And just in the past like couple of days, the trees like have woken up big time and the leaves got really big and green yeah but like I just I feel so at peace when I'm on the on the trails and I forage like I I've been into ramps lately as you know um but you know it's it's just the it's my happiest place and that's why before the pandemic I used to you know some people take all the money they earn and they save it and some people use it on really nice handbags and I choose to to take the, whatever money I can and travel the world and run in the most beautiful places so um, the first time I had pizza in Italy, I ran through three countries to get to it. Um, I did Transalpine. So we ran through Germany, Austria, and Italy. And then I spent a week eating pizza tip to tip and just lived out the dream. And I did that trip by myself. So like, it was, it was a big daring venture. And my mom was so nervous. She was like, are you going to be okay? Make lots of Xeroxes of your passport and keep them in safe places just in case. Mom, I can take a picture of my cell phone. 
Um, uh, mom, may you rest in peace. I love you. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's just, they, they, they both give me a sense of, uh, and I know that some people in my life would probably say you're so like, I get, I get very, uh, stressed easily with pizza if I'm late or if like I burn a pizza or if I drop a pizza. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I remind myself that, you know, people are just grateful to come pick up the pizza and for me to share that. And the same thing with running, it's just, you have to remind yourself each day that you should be grateful for the moments that you have and cherish them. And, you know, be sure to take care of you first and foremost, but to always remind those in your lives that you love them. And for me, it's my family, my girlfriend, my dog. And when I go out on the trails, I thank the trees and the animals for letting me come through their neck of the woods and sharing it with me. I love that. That's an awesome answer, Miriam. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you. We've got so. a bunch of questions pouring in. So, okay. And yeah. if we go over a little bit, it's fine. You know, I just going to be up all night anyhow, working on the website. Yes. No, no, we won't. We'll, we'll get through everyone's questions. We won't, we won't cut it off. Um, okay. okay. First one is from Mr. Joe Brandine. He says, Pine pineapple on pizza, great or a sin against nature? Hold on, let me get a prop. Uh oh, she's she's grabbing a prop, Joe. Stand by, stand by. Zing. <laughs> this apple belongs on pizza. <laughs> I will say I have a hundred percent conversion rate. And the thing with pineapple on pizza is, I didn't I make you? Did I make you Hawaiian pizza? I don't remember. No, I made you pepperoni pizza. The thing with pineapple on pizza is that so often people take a can of pineapple, like dull pineapple. And they just throw it on the pizza. And I'm like, under no circumstances, anybody want a ginormous chunk of juicy pineapple, like a hot, juicy pineapple in the mouth. But it's all about how you prepare it. So for my pizza, I do a pickled jalapeno pineapple that is pickled for at least two weeks. So you get, it's really spicy, but it's sweet and it's savory. And I put it on Genoa salami because I hate ham. So, you know, and I was like, oh, this is like the perfect pizza my dad is going to love. Because I grew up, my dad played poker and they always had like their their party meat platters and I always used to steal all the salami out there but so in a way my dad like there's a little bit of my dad in the Hawaiian pizza but like everyone that's tried it is like falling in love with it and I cut the pineapple so tiny and I also squeeze all the juice out before I put it on the pizza it's perfect so you know what I it, wherever you are come get my pizza and I believe in pineapple equality so <laughs> it belongs on pizza sorry <laughs> not sorry all right there you go Joe all right, next question is from Jessica Sameo. She has two questions, actually. First one, what is your favorite pizza topping and what is your favorite race? Favorite pizza topping. Um, I'm going to go with Ezo's 38 millimeter Supreme Pepperoni from Columbus, Ohio. I bring in pepperoni from Ohio because that's my way of putting a little bit of hometown pride mm -hmm. on my pizza favorite topping it's got some zing to it the quality's great um might give you a little bit of heartburn but life is short eat it up um <laughs> favorite, a ra sticker. <laughs> favorite race um it's tough i think uh it's probably a tie um between i mean the stage race transalpine in europe um in the united states oh, it's tough because there's the backcountry rise, um, that, that was probably one of my favorite races because that's where it's my spirit volcano. So Mount St. Helens erupted the day before I was born. And my dad will say, hell was breaking loose because they knew you were coming. <laughs> um, so I actually went and ran that race and I put a stress fracture in my ankle two miles in and I continued to do the race through high, through high water and hell. I, and I finished it. To this day, I still have a problem with that ankle but that is probably one of the most beautiful places on earth in the United States that I've run through because you're running through a mountain that has basically now almost 41 years later has completely grown back and like mm. foraging blueberries and strawberries while you're running. And, um, it is not an easy race. You have to do a lot of bushwhacking. Um, and they tell you that if there's any chance you might not finish, do not start this race because we need to use a helicopter to get you out. So hence the girl from Brooklyn refused to drop two miles in because I foolishly caught my, my foot got caught on a chain link fence that was on the ground for erosion. I mean, come on, why are you using chain link fence? Like I'm from Brooklyn. You think I know to look for that? <laughs> so 
So yeah, backcountry rides, highly recommend it. I mean, there's the Orcas Island where the Yetis are. So you can go out there and search for Yetis. I have one tattooed on my arm right here. Um, but, but yeah, so I highly recommend that. And if you really want to kill yourself, go for, for the quest for the crest. Uh, it's one of the run bum ones in, uh, I think, South Carolina. Um, brutal, brutal race, but it's really beautiful. And it's worth it when you get to the top and you see the sun rising and you just run along the, you run along the, the, the crest of the mountains. It's, there's, it's heaven on earth. Awesome. All right, there you go, Jess. There's your answer. Next question is from Mama Beck. You know her, Rebecca Constant. She yes. says, since hopefully traveling is opening up again in the near future, where do you want to go? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'd love to go to Hawaii and run some trails down there. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Vancouver. I want to go back to British Columbia. Mm. I did uh, Buck in Hell, which is one of Gary Robbins races, but I found that the Panorama Ridge um, out there, those are probably some of the most beautiful mountains on our continent. Mm. Um, we're not allowed in Canada yet, but that's probably one of the first places I'll go, Hawaii. And then I'd love to go back to the Alps. I mean, who doesn't want to do UTMB? It's just going to take me 12 years to get in with the point system <laughs> and the lottery. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's see what we got else. Oh, wow. Tough question here. Is it my sister? No, this is from uh, Michael Machetta. He says, who has the best pizza, New York or, or New Jersey? And then Jess chimes in that Connecticut needs to be included in that as well. So who has the best, New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut? I think, I think Jess made a very fair point. I think that Connecticut has some pretty outstanding pizza. New Jersey, New York, and Canada, they all have great places. How about I give you a place for each state to go to? So we're going to go to the spot. Frank Pepe's The Spot. When you go there, it's the Little Red Breast building. has the original oven. That's where you got to go, and you got to get their local root beer. I just like to get their cheese pizza. Not a huge fan of white clam. Not sorry about that. Um, if I'm going into New Jersey, the Ohio and me is going to go straight up to Star Tavern. They oh. don't put it in the squares, but they do have birch beer on tap. Doesn't get better than that. Um, in New York City, where they, there are too many places to name, but I will say one of the places that is closest to my heart is Sam's in Cobble Hill. You wouldn't go in there unless someone told you to. It is uh, formerly coal-fired pizza converted to natural gas. And you got to get the cheese pizza with garlic. And if you walk in there and there's a grumpy old man, just tell him that Miriam sent you. He'll sit you down, get the pizza, get his um, baked clams. They're some of the best baked clams in all of Brooklyn. It's the only place that Pauly G likes to get his baked clams. And the two old men fight over them all the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that for me is like, that's one of the spots. It's not a slice shop. I mean, none of them are slice shops. Mm. And I think it's great because it forces you to sit down and actually enjoy the pizza. That's so. awesome. Do you want to share the best spot in Ohio? Oh, there's two. Well, three, two, two. You guys already know how I feel about Marion's. If anybody can get me Marion's pizza, I will give you free pizza in my pizzeria for life if you come to New York. Um, oh, and I will stand whoa. by that. If somebody can get me some Marion's pizza. Um, and I will say the other place is Adriatico's Pizza. They're in Columbus and Cincinnati. Um, I've actually had it flown on dry ice twice and brought to New York. Um, that good. Yeah. It's not odd at all. And you go to a pizzeria and say, can I use your deck oven to reheat my pizza in this pan? It's not all the way baked. Um, but, uh, one time I flew back from Ohio on an airplane and I had a large Adriatico's pizza in foil in my purse. And the woman next to me is like, oh, it smells like pizza. And I was like, oh, I have a large pizza in my purse. And the guy behind me is like, you're going to Ohio. Why do you have a pizza in your purse? And then before you knew it, half the jet it's one of the smaller ones we're all talking about pizza and then I got a ride home because in that day it was safe to take rides home from people and Uber <laughs> really wasn't around that much I don't think it was around at all but yeah I mean it's like pizza is this magical thing like and I really believe in world pizza I don't mean like <laughs> that there's a world of pizza I think that like you take the word peace and toss it and put the word pizza in there because when I did the tours what I noticed is that you took 16 strangers from all around the world and we all would come together and put all of our differences aside and just talk about pizza and love it together. And mm -hmm. so what I found is that no matter where I go, if I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I'll say Papa John's pizza is really good. And all of a sudden, everyone in the party like, who are you? And get the hell out. And then it becomes <laughs> this thing and we all bond over and I no longer feel like the awkward girl in the room that's afraid to talk <laughs> to people. 
Um, but yeah, so, and like pizza also is very beneficial for running. I didn't mention this and nobody asked the question, but if you're to pick a pizza to go running with, it should be a wood fired margarita pizza. It's very, you know, the pies are very clean and healthy. You're looking at four to 500 calories, hundred calories a slice. It's way better than a gel. You just need to wrap it properly. And post-race, I like to go for deep dish because there's about 15 grams of protein per slice. Wow. So it's great Where, for muscle recovery. Where's that protein coming from? Where's the protein uh, coming from? The cheese, hundred percent the cheese. Okay. Cause they're using a, an aged mozzarella that's whole milk. Also known as just low moisture. We call it aged because it sounds more fancy. Because <laughs> it is aged. <laughs> I'm aged. I'm an aged trail runner. <laughs> I'm, I'm turning 41 in like two weeks. I, I'm in the master's division never. now. <laughs> um, okay, we. I think we've got some more questions in here. Let me scroll up here. I think Hit there me was, with your best slice. I think there was one. <laughs> uh, there was one. From, yes, Kaylin Hopkins. What is the strangest pizza you have ever made? Made? Um, I mean, I generally try not to put toppings on pizza. They're going to taste awful. But the strangest pizza I've ever put in my mouth was somebody, I was judging a competition for Cabot, which is a winery in Long Island. And somebody put Telegio and corn on a pizza. I like, did not want to put it in my mouth, but I had to because I was being paid for it. <laughs> the worst pizza I've ever about. No one should ever put Telegio on a pizza. Corn whatever but no never to legio and corn it's awful it's just and there's a reason that person did not win the competition <laughs> sorry not sorry oh there there you go um okay next question is from michael <laughs> should you roll the pizza like dean k the the ultra marathon man i'm sure you've heard that story where he took a whole he, pizza before and he, he was it like up. a reformed vegan and everything he would order a pizza to be delivered on the side of the road he would take it yeah. and roll it up and down the hatch okay so let's talk about the issue with that the pizza he's ordering most likely has the aged mozzarella which is basically oily processed cheese um and that is going to give you gut rot like it's going to make you want to throw up now uh, should you roll it? No. Cause honestly, if you're going to be getting a pizza on the side of the road while you're running hard miles, you might as well just sit down on the side of the road and fold it like a New Yorker and eat it properly. And I say, fold it. You're going to take that slice and you're going to grab like this and you're going to fold it. All right. You fold. <laughs> That's how we eat pizza in New York. We don't knife and fork it. We don't roll it up like this. Who wants to eat pizza like that? No one ever, unless you're like escaped from a mental asylum. Um, so, but if you're going to eat pizza, during a race, use a fresh mozzarella because there's no oil in it and it's not going to destroy your stomach. And the protein that is in that cheese is actually going to help with your muscle recovery. You always need a little protein when you're out on the trails like that. Some people do trail mix. Other people like me do pizza. And what's the best way, um, I'm asking this, this is in the chat. What's the best way to store your pizza? Like, do you stick it in your hydration pack? How do you do it? Um, so you want to, actually, I have it right here. Okay, so this is great. It's just a coincidence. That's right. I love me. all these. So this is so great. So this is a this is actually a hydration. This is a sleeve for my uh, bladder that Solomon makes. I don't know if they still make them, but this is it's insulated. But what I actually find this is great for carrying pizza in the summer. Um, but you wrap it in foil, individual slices, and then you stick it in here, and then your bladder's in here too, and that's going to keep it nice and chilled. So you put it against your your bladder in the bladder yeah so make okay. sure it's not on the side that's touching you but the side that's out here um and then this is like this is insulated so it's gonna also keep it you know it's basically i mean i guess it's my slice cooler that i carry inadvertently but yeah i i really wish solomon would maybe want to team up and do some pizza stuff together it'd be a huge win it'd be different than everything else like everyone running 250 miles across arizona right now i know right <laughs> <sighs> don't get me started i've been tracking it I know the, the yeah. live updates have been awesome. Have you, um, have you contacted any running companies, any type of gear stuff to do some sort of partnership? No, I mean, my girlfriend bought me the Gooder sunglasses that have uh, pizza on them. Oh yeah. And I thought yeah. about posting those, but I just haven't had a chance to plug the product. Um, and I'm really hoping they just send me a backup pair in case I ruin that pair, which is definitely possible. Um, but, uh, but so far, no, I mean, I feel like it would be awesome if they did. I mean, I run in Hoka and I always tag Hoka if I can, but I'm like, who wouldn't want, you know, 
a normal runner that runs on pizza. You know, I mean, Cliff Bar tried to make a, a gel that was like pizza and it was just awful. Like you ruined pizza. Don't do that now. <laughs> just use real pizza. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, I think those are all the questions we have in the chat. Um, how can people find you online? How can they order pizza if they want to order pizza? Give out um, all your links and everything so people can find you. Okay, so if you want to find me, um, the easiest and best way to see everything pizza about me is to go on Instagram at the ZA report. So the Z A report, um, or just type in Miriam Weiskin. They both come up. Um, so, but that's how you can find me on Instagram. And then the new website is launching and online ordering begins tomorrow. Um, it was a two month wait for pizza. I am doing it kind of like getting Justin Bieber tickets. Um, I released X amount of slots, whoever gets them first, they're theirs. And then online ordering closes. I open it up each week. Um, and I believe I will be posting all my ordering Wednesday night at 9 PM. Not tonight, because I didn't get it done yet, but um, I'm going to put it up tomorrow and then thereafter will be every Wednesday. You can get uh, you can get your hands on pizza at my pop up at number seven in Fort Greene twice a week, Monday and Tuesday nights from five to eight, only with the pre ordered slots. You can win pizza on my live streams. I give out free pizza if you tune in live at five. Um, and then also, if you're unemployed or you're a first responder or a teacher or you're just feeling down on your luck. Um, send me a DM on Instagram and I have pies that are reserved just for those people, um, each night. And then of course, Sicilian will be on Fridays because we're not doing Sicilian Saturday. It interferes with my running. Let's be real. I have to yeah. run in order to stay sane. Um, but yeah, so you can find me there. I don't really use Facebook all that much. I'll maybe update that page. My family uses it a lot. And, um, if you're looking for any PR clippings, it's all on my Facebook wall. Um, but yeah, Instagram, the website, and, um, most of all, I guess, if you have an opportunity, once we start dining, dine in, come see me here. And then if you want to book a private event, um, I heard this rumor that I might be baking for the SAS squad team um, at some races later on in the year after I get through my 100 miler that I'm training for in Ohio in July. Yes, I heard the same rumor. We'll have to confirm it. <laughs> yes, Uni's so excited. And Mama Beck is going to be so happy. I should have said the first place I want to travel to after the pandemic's over is New Jersey, but I've been coming there all along. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I am so, so glad that we met in that, uh, the May Apple parking lot last year and um, we've been able to keep in touch, get to know each other. I am so excited for the future of your career. And I hope there's some really good overlap between Sasquad and, um, and the ZA report. So oh thank you. I, I hope to man, I hope to woman up a an aid station yes. one day at your race where people are just coming in and getting pizza and they're like, is this really the aid station? I'm like, heck yeah, this is the most badass race in the world. You should know that we always take care of our runners. So that's right. Let's, and we'll we're gonna make it happen. Thinking for the back of the pack runners, right? We're never we're never oh gonna heck do that. yeah. Always I feel like you know what the nice thing at Trans Rockies used to do for the back of the pack runners they used to get the best tent spots. So like the tent mm -hmm. spots that are right in the front, the DFLers get those. That's and awesome. the, all the fast people have to go all the way towards the back. And it's just like, it's kind of great. You know, let, let's celebrate all paces. I love that. All ages, all pizza lovers. Um, yeah. And if you, if you love pineapple, let's celebrate you even more. <laughs> That's right. Joe, you, you heard that. So equality for pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, Marion, thank you again so much for joining us tonight. Um, you want to find out more about her, you listen to all the links that she provided. You want to find out more about Sasquatch Trail Running, go to our website, sasquatchtrailrunning.com. We are very active on social media. Instagram is Sasquatch Trail Runners. Facebook is Sasquatch Trail Running. So until we see you again, keep it squatchy. All right. Have a slice night. <laughs> Peace out.